Hey everyone, welcome to Mushroom Wonderland, and today I'm going to take us on a walk into the woods to hunt for lobster mushroom. I've heard that they were popping up, so let's go find out for ourselves if we can find some delectable, amazing wild lobster mushrooms on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. Oh, look at this coming up right on the edge of the trail this is an amazing summer find this is the lobster mushroom hypomyces lactiflorum so it's a host mushroom with a parasitization that makes it bright orange like this and all contorted and a really great edible um, look at this they're just boiling right out of the ground right alongside the trail these are just kind of like sitting here these are definitely still attached and uh that's awesome we're only oh my gosh i see a much bigger one i'm probably gonna toss that one but look right over here oh baby so look at that here's your lobster mushroom look at that perfect example nice so these are the first ones i've seen of 2025 out here um was hoping to see them i've seen them showing up on Facebook groups and stuff uh, um, down in California and Southern Oregon, but here we are in the Puget Sound finding Hypomyces lactiflorum. So this one's even already riddled by bugs. And uh, again, I'm gonna toss that one out. But this one, scientifically called Hypomyces lactiflorum, and that is the parasitization of this host mushroom. That's a, a Russell abrevipes. So Russell abrevipes, a big boring white mushroom then it gets parasitized by this fungus known as hypomyces lactiflorum and uh hypo meaning beneath or under and myces meaning fungus so that's fungus under and so you know it's like under the skin i suppose and uh lactiflorum lacti meaning milk florum meaning flowing so that would represent the host that's the russell abrevipes which kind of related to the um lactarius mushrooms so lacti like lactarius so flowing with milk fungus under so there you go hypomyces lactiflorum this is a perfect specimen right here look at the coloration on that and then you can see this white color and that's the spores of the parasite and I'm not really sure if the parasite uh, you know parasitizes the the fungus underground or if it comes through the air but I mean, you see this primordia come up already parasitized, which would suggest that it's already there in the soil. We know that it transforms a pretty boring mushroom into a really desired edible mushroom. So you can't mistake this for anything. Look at that. I mean, that is just one of a kind. And, and you can see why they call it a lobster mushroom. It's bright orange, just like a lobster. And then if I cut a section of it out, you can see the inside flesh is white. Look at that. It looks just like lobster meat. And so some people say that they smell fishy. I get that sometimes, but typically if they're fresh, they shouldn't have much of a fishy scent in my uh, experience. So yeah, not too fishy when it's fresh like this. Now when they get old, they'll definitely have a fishy smell. But I think if you're finding fresh lobster mushrooms, they're not smelling much like lobster. You don't want really fishy smelling ones. And these ones smell just a little bit fungal, maybe a little bit of seafood, but you know nothing off-putting. And uh, don't eat rotten food so if your mushrooms are smelling really rotten or fishy probably would avoid eating those but this is generally edible for everyone i don't know of anyone that's had problems eating a lobster mushroom very gentle mushroom on the gi system super excited to see these out here in the woods right now beautiful uh lobster mushroom let's go see if we can find some more see this kind of winking at me right here oh she's a little a little bit cracked Got pretty hot and dry the last few days. It's been 95 degrees for a couple days. Not a rainbow chanterelle. This one, Cantharellus formosus. I know because this area, we just don't ever get rainbow chanterelles because we don't have spruce. So you got to have that spruce. But it does have a pretty bright colored hymenium. Look, and there's barely even gills or false gills under there. But, you know, sometimes they look like this. And out east, they have a species of chanterelle that are commonly called smooth chanterelle. So sometimes I find what looks like a smooth chanterelle, but it's just uh, it's just a golden chanterelle that's just a little bit 
different morphologically because of the dry conditions but it's living on the roots of this probably this big huge douglas fir tree right or you could tell because of these cones right here and they got these little little tails sticking out of the scales but great mycorrhizal host so yeah i collect that really delicious mushroom and uh, you can find these in the summertime despite it being super dry you know some of these mushrooms survive because they associate with these big trees and get moisture out of the roots so that's a nice golden chanterelle and uh take that one with me oh and it doesn't hurt to pluck the mushroom out of the ground if you ever farmed mushrooms you will know that it does not harm the fungus to pluck the mushrooms off and you actually get more material and i can just shave the outside of this off and save all of that if i cut it right there at the soil line you would have missed all of that you're actually probably doing it a favor by doing that i'm carrying a plastic bag in my pocket because i had a feeling this might happen i didn't want to bring a basket here with me because that's just bad luck but uh look at that perfect little guys amazing so this way people don't really ask what i have in the bag let's assume it's dog poop or something like that and do you like my knife isn't that amazing you can get this at modern forager modern-forager.com super sweet knife my favorite foraging knife i've ever had look how quick this opens boom you need one of those you need one very cool as you can see here comes gunner yeah he's got a little bit of a limp he's got arthritis in his ankle and it's just been getting worse over the years he's had it for a long time but he's on carprofen he feels okay he's just kind of slow and got a limp so he's in fewer of my videos but he's still coming along with he loves to get out in the woods but maybe not for the super long walks luckily this spot is kind of close to my house which is nice so nice to have this cloud cover for a change it's seriously been upper 80s and all the way up into the mid 90s the last several days so we're not really built for that here in western washington so usually there's a little streak of that through the summer hopefully we just got it over with uh, but still no rain in the forecast it's been really dry out but the lobster mushrooms they're one of these mushrooms that'll come out in the dead of summer um, i've heard the same story on the east coast and out in pennsylvania and stuff that you know really dry summers they still find lobster mushrooms that's been my experience too so don't be um, discouraged by the lack of rain so we got to an area where i know they grow i see something poking out and you probably wouldn't see this if you were just walking down the trail unless you got a really trained eye but they're like this sometimes so check this out you almost can't see anything but right here you can see this orange kind of poking out look at that that's what we call a shrimp a mushroom bump Look at that. That thing's let off a lot of spores. And look right next to it. You probably didn't even see this. Look at that. So when you see these in the market, they were always picked wild. And you can see how tricky some of them are to find. They're just like really hiding down here. It would be so easy to have walked by those. But luckily, I've found them in this exact spot before. So my eye has been a little bit trained. So usually look for the flag. Look for the one that's kind of poking out. And then slow down from there and then often you'll be like oh there's another one and there's another one and there's another one so versatile mushrooms very cool those were hidden i like to hide my little holes back up so that maybe passerbys don't don't notice so much right gunner that's right so look at that western hemlock douglas fir western hemlock alder salmonberry a lot of different things growing right in this area uh, where the lobster mushrooms like to grow so you see this forest that i like looking for the lobster mushrooms in some of the unique characteristics is going to be um, the diversity of this forest it's it's got a lot of different plants going on we have some hardwood um, alders and willows and there's big douglas fir and big western hemlock a lot of this salal brush this is usually present when i'm finding lobster mushrooms um, as well as sword ferns so these uh these are called sword ferns and you know you often see both of these species growing underneath conifer um, canopy like this and these are the areas where i find lobster mushrooms um, the better the species diversity under these canopies of evergreen the higher chance I seem to have of finding lobster mushrooms. They really like diversity. So rarely in a purely Douglas fir tree farm stand um, do I find them. It's usually in a pretty mixed um, type forest like this. Another thing about the areas where I often find lobster mushrooms is that it's where some sunlight can kind of get through 
the the canopy so there's speckled sunlight often on the ground and on the brush around where i'm finding lobster mushrooms and chanterelles can grow in those areas too but it seems like chanterelles seem to prefer um, darker uh, shadier mossier habitat where the lobster mushroom um, doesn't mind a little bit of sunshine and uh, there's usually wild blackberry growing right around there i often scratch my arms up on the blackberries because uh, they like that dappled sunlight as well this is another common one I often find around lobster mushrooms, the, the wood fern or the bracken fern. These are really common in lobster patches. Oh, look right down here, be easy to miss those, but we got oh, more of these super dry summer chanterelles. Look at that. Notice how it's all kind of one uniform color you know, that's indicative of the Cantharellus formosus. The rainbow chanterelle is going to be much brighter underneath the cap and much duller on top of the cap. Look at that. It didn't look like much from the top, but those are pretty substantial little mushrooms, man. You get a few of those and you got a good meal. Today's the 18th of July. Stoked to be seeing some, uh, some lobster mushrooms out already. In the fall, if you were carrying wet mushrooms in a bag like this, they would just be getting pulverized and turned to mush. But, you know, here in the summertime, these mushrooms are so dry that um, they're, it's okay to carry them in a bag for a little while. You can do whatever you want, really. You don't need to listen to anybody giving you a hard time. No pick shaming here. If you want to pick in plastic bags, okay. But I will say that if it's dry, if it's really wet out, they're going to get grody. Yeah. More chanterelles. There's summer fruiting. Look at that. Beautiful little nuggets. And there's a few of them right here. Very nice. If you go into my mushroom recipes playlist, there's a recipe for lobster mushroom bisque, which is really, really good. Just a cream based stew of lobster mushrooms and um, really delicious. So you could put seafood in there or you don't have to. I just use the mushrooms as a replacement for lobster. And again, it's not super fishy, but a really amazing cream of mushroom soup. Hey, what you been doing, man? All right, so we found some amazing lobster mushrooms out here in the woods in the middle of July. So I'm gonna take this back to the kitchen, wash it off and cook it up and see what it tastes like. I'll give you my official review. So let's go back to the kitchen and cook up this beautiful lobster mushroom. All right, so I got home with my lobster mushrooms and a few chanterelles, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up these lobster mushrooms. I'm gonna cut the dirt off with a knife and then I'm just gonna spray them off with water. It's okay to wash your mushrooms and especially lobster mushrooms. I'll often just lay them out in the yard and hit them with the hose, but I can just hit them with the faucet really quick and get them nice and washed up. Just gonna cut away any of the dirt and discolored parts. And uh, I rinse them off once. I'll set them aside and keep rinsing off all the other ones. And then when I come back after a second and that water has kind of soaked into the dirt and stuff, then they just really get clean the second rinse. All right, I'm gonna put down some paper towels and uh, just set, set these out to dry for a little bit, but look how pretty those are now that they're washed up. All right, I got some nice choice specimens here. I'm gonna start getting a pan hot. I'm just gonna use a little pan. You could use a big pan for if you're gonna cook for a lot of people. I'm just cooking for myself. I'm intentionally using a smaller pan because I'm gonna cut these into little cubes and I wanna make a layer of them about three quarter inches thick across there. Um, and I'm just gonna keep stirring it. So I wanna get them golden brown, but I don't wanna get them too crispy. And that's one thing that can happen with lobster mushrooms is that if you cut them into thin slices and then try to brown them on each side is they'll be like potato chip crispy and I don't quite want that. I want a little bit of softness. I want a little bit of that softer texture rather than just really crispy bits of mushrooms, which lobster mushrooms have a tendency to turn into. So there we go. They're nicely cubed up, pretty uniform size. And the host of this mushroom is the Russula, which is known for being very crunchy. 
So it's a different kind of texture than your grocery store button mushroom. So I'm gonna start with extra virgin olive oil and we're just gonna go right into the pan with these. And like I said, I want a nice layer of the lobster mushrooms because if there's too much room in the pan, they tend to get really crisp, almost kind of burned. It is starting to get a little bit seafoody smelling in here and I'm, I'm just starting to get all the moisture out of these. So they are gonna steam a lot of water out of the mushrooms. And if you cook eggs with lobster mushrooms, it'll turn your eggs red or purple colored, which is pretty crazy. I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt and that's really gonna kind of draw the rest of the moisture out of there. And now I'm gonna add in also a pad, a nice, pretty nice sized pad of butter. I'm gonna add in some fresh herbs. I have marjoram and oregano. And I'm just gonna add the fresh leaves right in there with the butter. All right, these are about ready to dish up. Got our nice sourdough. All right, and there we go. We've got some lobster mushroom sourdough toast. Looks pretty amazing. So I'm gonna give it the official taste test. Big bite of the mushrooms on that. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So good. When cooked like this, they kind of have the consistency of fried potatoes. They definitely remind me of potatoes because they just have a nice crunch to them. This is amazing. If you were to serve these on crostinis to your guests, everybody's mind's gonna get blown. Mm. This is so, so good. You could even make a little sauce that might um, you know, be great in a pasta or something like that. But this is the way that I like to cook lobster mushrooms and uh, they're just delicious. They're absolutely exquisite. So I suggest you get out there, find some lobster mushrooms, cook them up. Oh my gosh, what a, what a treat. So thank you for joining Mushroom Wonderland. Join me on Patreon at Mushroom Wonderland, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, everywhere, or go to mushroomwonderland.com. Also check out Modern Forager at modern-forager.com. They help sponsor this video. And we'll see you on the next one. Much love, everyone. Peace out.